Hi right, guys. It is a lovely and exciting Sunday night here in the second or third collapse here in the Yucatan Peninsula. I think we've had a few collapses down here and we're going to have another one pretty soon. Here it is, a Sunday night, February 26, 20. 23 so since it is Sunday this is not I don't know is this a chronicle of the collapse or is this a Sunday sermon so obviously I'm back over here at medium.com where I I actually managed to get a headline in two paragraphs published so I am now on medium.com look out guys but anyway you know, a few days ago, I was kind of poking fun at some 20-something fellow about his hopium. And today, I found this young man named J.W. Barlament. Kind of like Parliament with a B. J.W. Barlament. 800 followers. He describes himself as a college writer trying to say something of some interest every once in a while. So uh, I found what uh, J.W. said today of interest to this old man. <clears throat> and we're going to share it with you today here in our Sunday Doomsday Sermon. The pervasive despair of the modern day and how to find meaning in the madness. We're going to let a 20-something explain to us how to find meaning in the madness, you know, when he brings out the hopium in the end. <clears throat> okay, take it away, J.W. What's on the minds of this college writer in 2023? Someone opened up to me recently about their struggles with finding a sense of purpose in life. Hmm. They expressed a long list of different reasons why life as it is today set up by a longer list of outdated and openly hostile institutions that have not and will not allow themselves to be reformed is not worth living. They said that happiness was too hard to come by and that the long intervening periods of pain were too much to handle. Now I don't know how old this uh, person was that he was talking to but uh, yes that is uh, pretty much what life is are long uh, intervals of pain with brief little flashes of pleasure. And just so you know, youngsters, the older you get, uh, the intervals of pain become longer and the flashes of pleasure become fewer. Anyway, back to the young man. They said correctly, uh, that the system is rigged and coming down anyway, so there was no point in trying to get ahead in it now. And they are 100% correct on that. They said that everything has gotten so bad that everyone else has become insufferable, and meeting new people who will not ghost you in a week is all but impossible. Well, I would say at least meeting members of the opposite sex for any chance of establishing a romantic relationship. Uh, that is certainly true for, uh, but maybe for the 20-somethings is true for everybody. And I could not help but agree. Yes, obviously, I did my best to cheer them up and pretend like they were wrong and being unreasonable. But as much as I will try here to prove that they're wrong, 
their points were all really unnervingly reasonable. Let's look within. I love it when these 20-somethings look within. Let's look within and be honest with ourselves here. The life of the common person in most Western countries and the U.S. especially is hard fought, spiritually empty, and politically comical. Okay, I'm sorry, JW. I'm three times as old as you are, brother. You are, you know, for someone one third my age, he's way above the pack. He is completely correct about uh, people in the U.S. being spiritually empty and politically comic, politically comical. But if uh, if anybody living in the U.S. claiming that life in the U.S. is hard fought. Obviously, this young man has not ever traveled south of the Rio Grande River. This very nice young couple uh, kind of managing this place. Their house, I think, is about 8 by 8 feet. That uh, if, if any American had to trade places with this nice young couple uh, overseeing this place where I am, or about 80% of the people living uh, in Buena Vista, Mexico, they would uh, have a whole new definition of life being hard fought. But anyway, we will uh, give the kid a break here, because two out of three ain't bad. Anyway, <clears throat> at this point, I think you either see it that way or you don't, and if you don't, I'm not laying out the argument here, nor am I working with precise terms and technical metrics. I am talking about an uncomfortable aura and a shudder traveling through the air that enters and depresses everyone all the time. I'm talking about the common conclusion made in whispers and late night confessions by millions of people across this country that life for us is in a constant and certain decline. And that is exactly what it is. is uh, life for the 20 somethings and everybody else is in a constant and certain decline. So uh, this young man has done his homework. If humanity were a body plagued by illness, our collectives its organs and ourselves its cells, I think only a hopelessly small number of those cells would be actively helping fight its illness. And the rest, whether by their own fault or otherwise, are actively making everything worse. And can you blame us? It's not just that society made me smoke weed or whatever. It's not just that culture is promoting harmful and indecent content around the clock which convinces millions to ruin their own lives with vice, it is also that the very structure of our government and most powerful social institutions in the military, education, banking, and more are set up to disinherit working people, being all but the richest of us, from all but the tiniest possible bit of the wealth that we create. We are subjected to economic insecurity and in mass in the richest country in the history of the world. And this forces working people, or basically everybody, into such squalid conditions for their entire lives 
that depression could be more accurately labeled perfect reason than cognitive malfunction. It's not even inept on the part of the powers that be. At this point, it's malign. And what can anyone do in the face of malignancy but resist? Okay, again, obviously, I don't think that J.W. Barlamant looking at his picture and seeing that he is a college writer has no clue what living in squalid conditions for their entire lives means on any single level. Uh, or maybe he just has a different definition of squalid than I do. But uh, if he means, uh, well, anyway, I'm not going to change the words of this young man's, out of this young man's mouth. I would like to hear his essay when he's 63. Okay. There is no purpose in the lives we are forced to live. You've heard it before. Be born, go to school, go to college, get a job, get married, have kids, get forgotten by your community in your old age, and die is a pretty lousy life plan, yet it is the one we are all given from birth and judged as disappointments in death if we don't follow. But that only means there is no purpose in the lives we are told to live. It says nothing about life, and we must make the distinction. There is honor in the world, I believe, no matter what any postmodern deconstructionists have to say about it. There is a right way to do things, and there is an unwritten code of human goodness by which we should abide. And there is honor, now and forever, in doing that which you think is right, and especially when no one else is doing it. There is honor in stepping outside of the system set up for us and going radically our own way without predecessor or supporter, if need be, and trying to get with your own hands what you really want from life. There is honor in fighting the good fight, even if it seems lost. There is honor in fulfilling your duty as a human and contributing something good to the human race and the wider world. In keeping the faith that the ailing body of which we are all but cells has enough life left in it yet to be revived. And uh, now, I, I don't know, I don't think that J.W. is a doomer. Okay, there's nothing in here. He's clearly a doomer adjacent. I do think he will become a doomer uh, later in life. Uh, but to the degree that uh, that there is honor in stepping outside of the system set up for us and going radically your own way uh, is a description of becoming a doomer. Uh, there is honor in it, but if you want to greatly up your chances of living in squalid conditions and finding yourself alone with no support whatsoever from society at large if you want to be just, uh, you know, viewed by the vast majority of your fellow Americans as a freak, 
as a lunatic uh, freak than take this young man's advice. I took, well, I wasn't taking his advice. Uh, I, I was basically taking, uh, well, uh, I, I was taking, uh, let's just call it Terrence McKenna's advice and, you know, walking away from uh, the life that we're taught we're supposed to live and going my own way fighting what I thought was a good fight and as my mama would say no good deed goes unpunished uh, anybody think thinking that taking this young man's advice means they're going to be happy uh, I, I got some bad news for you. You might be. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I didn't mean to get in a, in a debate with this young man. I really would like to hear him rewrite this essay, what he would say about his essay when he's 63. Okay. But now, here comes the hopium. And good for him. I, for one, think we should fight. And we should fight for goodness, happiness, and health wherever we may find them fought against. And we should act as if we can win, even if we can't. Because if we give in now and all sulk off to drink, And I'll sulk off to drink and smoke ourselves to death or eat McDonald's and watch porn every day or maybe just hang ourselves and get it over with. We certainly can't win and the solution to the problem of sin cannot just be to shrug and keep sinning. I don't mean to start sounding religious all of a sudden. While that faith may be identical with Christ to some, it isn't to all and it isn't to me. The important part is this. There is nothing wrong with us when we feel like life isn't worth living. It is a natural and rational reaction to a world around us that looks utterly hopeless to the observer but if we keep our uh, if we keep our uh, hope and as importantly our wits that things will get better and if we take the step to do our part to try to make that better world real then we might just make our uh, might just make our, uh, our hopes real too and give to our progeny hmm, that purpose which was withheld from us. So clearly uh, JW uh, looks like he is planning to have progeny so I guess JW Barlament is not quite a doomer, but uh, I want to talk to this young man in five years. J.W., if you're listening, uh, could you please get back to me in five years and let me know how many progeny you have? And with that, uh, I'm going to go lower this bottle of... Uh, <laughs> Good Lord, what do I got? Uh, good Lord, I still, I got to drag this out for a few more nights. I'm going to go have a lightweight margarita for the collapse while I still can. Get out there and fight the good fight, whatever your definition of that is. Bye, guys. Yes, here is, uh, <laughs> here is a, 
Here is what fighting the good fight will bring you.